Let's do this as a blocked case. I prefer those. And I do have all of that. I need the width, the length down, some extra for the leather, and some extra for a stitch line. So I'm going to go about half inch or so on the outside of this. Just use that as a stitch. We'll do the same thing here. We'll just kind of take that out to the edge of the paper. Now for the distance down, well, we don't need it all the way up on this. So we're going to probably take it. We're going to leave enough down there that we've got some room. We're probably going to take it across right about here. Kind of got a line marked on my block there. going to be my base that I will shape. Now I need the piece that I'm going to put it on. We need room for our clip, which I'm going to make this um, clip to where the bottom of the pouch opens. Do that I'm just gonna also just trace the clip if I can get it to hold still. Alright, and then we need room all the way around that. for a magazine pouch. So that
and it's a lot quicker. Also on the magazine pouch, I don't want the clip on the inside of it. I don't care as much about the snap on that. Magazines are um, kind of going to get more wear from going in and out of the gun than they do from a little brass snap on a holster. Uh, but that steel clip, I want to keep it from uh, rattling against the back of the magazine. So I'm going to set that first before I glue the liner on. And this piece. Now for this, I've got it marked. It's a little hard to see. Sink a hole down there. Two holes. We're going to use a really small hole punch way up here. So the clip is going to wind up kind of upside down on it compared to what um, I would use on a normal pouch. So that the pouch actually opens downward. Uh, so instead of trying to pull the magazine up into your armpit when you try to draw it out, you can just pop the snap on it and then slide it right out downward. There's a chance that you could wind up uh, dropping a magazine if you're not careful with paying attention to the snap and you accidentally unsnap it but it makes it a lot easier to draw and honestly I've never had anybody have a problem and complain about it so we're gonna take this clip I didn't look around to see if I had a nickel one um, to match a lot of the rest of the hardware I'm putting on here. I don't think it's going to matter on the clip. I had a black one laying on my table here. Okay, while we're here, let's go ahead and finish up this top edge on this. That's going to be something I want to do before I assemble it, and I don't want to forget it. And I'm going to go ahead and set the snap on this as well. Now the reason I want to set this snap before I assemble it is it's going to be a lot easier to put that snap in there without having to deal with, um, well, this other piece sewn onto it already. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to work with there. Let's just we'll grab our, you see I've got a couple marks already on that. 
um, from previous ones I've made. I'll just use that as a anvil basically for punching the hole. Because the leather obviously won't damage my hole punch. And let's go ahead and set our snap. Okay. Now, include those together. I'll have to snap in that later. I do want some stitch lines on that. Now let's put this piece together. Now this one can lay flat. I do like to go around the uh, spring clip in there and press the leather down. Because I feel that then you don't wind up with your spring clip press into the inside of it and messing with your inner dimensions. Plus I kind of just like the look of it. Same with this one. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the top part here, but this part won't be done until after I've got it sewn together and I trim and cut all of this. Then I can actually um, sort that out and finish that up. So yeah, let's do some edge finishing. Now, of course, you can use a darker color dye on your edges. Um, I'm not doing that here. It just looks darker because it's wet at the moment. Um, and I'm not doing that because I didn't do that on the pieces for the shoulder rig. Um, of course.
course, I could always go back and redo those, but I don't want to. Um, I'll just do like this, like I normally do. I'm going to use the same color dye on the edges that I used on the surface. Now one thing a lot of times I do that doesn't show up on camera is these little extra little bits of thread. I'll just take a lighter to those and melt them real quick. Because I'm using either a nylon or a polyester thread usually. That works just fine to get those hidden away. But remember to make sure you don't have anything flammable like fresh dye or um, contact cement whenever you do that because it will remind you very exuberantly that that stuff is in fact flammable as soon as you go to do this. All right, time to go downstairs for more sewing machine. Now in order to get as close as possible on this locked case uh, to the side here and to the clip on the back side I changed out my presser foot here for one that's only got one side on it instead of my standard one that's got two little feet. This one only has a foot on the inside. And then I'll be able to get a little bit closer with it. Another thing that I found with these um, blocked cases is to have the block with you when you go to sew it and have it inside there. Because otherwise this can either get pinched in or spread out too much as you're pushing down on it. And it winds up changing whether it's too tight or too loose. Um, so you just won't get a good fit unless you put that block in there while you're sewing it. And there, as you can see, I get that stitched up nice and close without that extra eighth of an inch or so of presser foot in between that edge there. Now I can just go ahead and sand these edges all smooth and it'll be ready to set the snap and finish up. Okay, let's set our snap on this, which I almost made that not long enough, but it should work. If I include the pattern for this in anything, which I don't know if I will because I'm not sure about the blocked case part uh, of a pattern because it can vary pretty dramatically. Um, you just basically make them oversized and then you have to trim them out to be sure later on. There we go. This works if I have to cut out some leather. Yep, that's gonna work. OK, 
Okay. So this was like the third part of a video that I broke into pieces because it was getting way too long. And this was just the magazine pouch of it. But there's also a video for the holster that was going with this and the shoulder straps. If you manage to get here without seeing those, I'll put up a playlist or a link to videos somewhere on the screen. Uh, and of course, there's always a subscribe link. It should be over, usually over here. Anyway, well, while we have some holster patterns on our Etsy pages, downloadable PDFs that you can purchase, um, I don't currently have any shoulder holster patterns like this on there. So that's something I mean to remedy. I haven't got it done yet, but I'm planning on putting together a pack of different shoulder harnesses and how to alter holsters to fit them. Maybe even include some holster patterns. Haven't decided yet, but that's something that's in the works and might show up in the near future. Uh, and otherwise, if you have any questions about, well, basically any of this, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. I do read the comments, um, and me and my sister together will try and answer any of them that we can. Um, one of the two of us. Usually me if it's technical, her if it's something she understands. But anyway, thank you for watching, and all the subscribers out there, thank you to, to you as well, because this has been a lot more successful for this channel than I ever expected it to be.